Have you ever wondered about the AnyCubic Low Odor Resin? Well, if you have, stick with me and I'm going to explain more. So let's jump into it. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the AnyCubic Low Odor Resin. Is it really low odor? What are the impacts from the MSDS sheet? What about the air quality? We're going to talk about all those things as we go through this. However, before we start, one cautionary note. I am not a doctor, have never played one on TV, not even on YouTube. So this is not medical advice. I just want to put that out there. I'm simply going to be reviewing the engineering data and the experience I have with testing it with this air quality. Meter. Now, you guys might remember about two years ago, I did this for FDM printers. I tested PLA, PETG, ASA, ABS, etc., and came up with some very interesting results. Well, I'm going to revisit that with um, SLA resins here now in the present time. Now, a couple years ago, too, I also did a, a video which was rather popular yet unpopular when SLA printers first started coming out. I purchased one, I opened the bottle of resin, had an allergic reaction to the resin. I did a video on it pointing uh, out this um, information in the MSDS, the risks. I got feedback from doctors about how risky this stuff was. And a little hint, it really hasn't changed that much since then. But a lot of people said, oh, you're just not tough enough. You're this and that and other things. The piece is with resin, and, and I'm really happy that, you know, uh, Joe Telling, you know, Maker's Muse and, and Uncle Jesse and all these other guys really got on the bandwagon about, you know, when they're covering SLA stuff, doing a bit of warning about this. This is not something you want to use in your living room, your kid's bedroom, or have regular exposure to. This is not very nice stuff, even in today's world. Now, we're going to look at a couple different types of resins in this series. Today, we're going to start with the AnyCubic Low Odor Resin. Now, one of the things I can tell you is I got this resin. It's supposed to be low odor, and to me, eh, I can't really say it's low odor. Now, unfortunately, I can't share that with you, nor can I measure it per se. But from my perspective, the odor of this is very similar. Now, the other piece I did is I went to the AnyCubic website and I looked for an MSDS sheet, a material safety data sheet. And I think the, the new kids call it something different, but it is still listed as, uh, I think it's a, a safety data sheet now for chemical products or something like that, but I'm old school. So if I say MSDS, you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I didn't find one specifically for the low odor resin which left me scratching my head but I'm going to share a little bit more of that with you but also what I'm going to do or what I actually did is I built up a test jig now uh, testing SLA resins are a little bit different than the FDM because when you're doing FDM you're heating something up you're you're partly aerosolizing it and all those kind of things with an SLA printer it really doesn't work that way basically you're simply using UV light to cure a portion or a layer of plastic to the previous one so you're really not heating it up or aerosolizing it or anything like that so what I did is designed a simple containment chamber for it uh, placed a measured amount in this case 13 grams of the material in there with this meter and I was actually very surprised at the results which I received from this. Now, I'll run it up in the corner and you can see it. And in kind of the long story short, I was really surprised there were no VOCs. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. So a VOC is a volatile organic compound. And we've seen quite a few of those actually when we printed with uh, FDM, especially with a styrene-based plastic like ABS or ASA. However, with this, we saw no, no volatiles. But what we did see is a steady rise of formaldehyde inside the chamber. Now, again, when we get to the MSDS, I'm going to explain a little bit of that more. Um, and I was actually at first puzzled by why over the hour test period did the formaldehydes rise. And it, it hit me later in the shop here above me are a number of, of bright white uh, LED lights. Those bright white lights have a very high, um, you know, blue frequency to them to make them white. And so that comes very close and probably there is radiation in the 400 nanometer spectrum 
or bouts where this material cures. So what was happening in the chamber is the material was actually curing and as it cured it released more and more formaldehyde. So I think this is an interesting point to watch. Now for the little bit that it cured under the shop lights it wasn't a huge amount of formaldehyde as you'll see. Now one of the things I'm going to probably do in the future is I'm going to rerun some of these tests where I have a UV light illuminate the chamber and I watch the formaldehyde creation in, in the chamber when it's being accelerated because obviously the low amount of, of you know, uh, roughly 400 nanometer light coming from above is not and did not overly solidify the uh, resin. But it was enough to begin releasing formaldehyde. So with that being said, I want to jump over to the MSDS. And there's a couple different pieces with this. One of the first pieces we see is may cause respiratory irritation. This is important because, again, this stuff is not very friendly. And even though it says when I purchased it, it's supposed to be low odor. If it is a low odor, it's only a very small difference than regular SLA. So, so don't look for it to be whole, you know, like 50% less because uh, that has not been my experience with the bottle I purchased. Now, I've only purchased one bottle. Maybe it's my bottle. I don't know. But I'm not thinking so, especially since I could only find one MSDS sheet. Now, the other thing that it says here, and one of the things I want to qualify here, this is in its liquid state that we're talking about. This is not when it becomes a solid. So it's an important distinction to keep in mind. The other piece is precautionary description. Use only outdoors or in well-ventilated areas. Please do not put this in your kid's bedroom, in your living room. Um, you know, and I don't even recommend your basement because it's still in the air envelope of your house. Now, for the two inseating years from when I did my original tests, I did not have any SLA printers because I could not adequately vent them. I have since built a whole new house, shop, everything else, and I built it so I could ventilate for SLA. So this is not in my basement. This is a formal shop where I have basically the equivalent of a fume hood to be able to evacuate the fumes outside. And for those that say, well, I'm now killing my neighbors, I live on five acres, and so there's a bit of separation between me and the cows. So it, it's okay. But with that being said, one of the things that I wish to talk about is the makeup of this. So you see here, we basically have three compounds. We have a polyurethane acolate, if I'm saying that correctly. Basically what this is, is this is the bulk of the slow curing um, plastic, if you will. Now the interesting part of this is now we have the second piece um, in a, a silylate monomer. Now what this is, the monomer is designed to do is to kind of bulk up, to create larger molecules uh, from extra components or added components to it. And then we have a photo initiator and this is sort of like the accelerator. So this is one of the reasons that, you know, after you print your SLA print, that you need to put it under a UV light. And that's to fully cure the polyurethane uh, acylate. If I'm saying that correctly, if I'm not, you kind of get the idea. Uh, the other piece that I find interesting is notice the concentration varies here on all three of these components. And I'm, what I'm wondering is if for the different versions of this, if they're not varying. So, for example, I'm sure that, you know, maybe a certain component of this creates more odor than the next or something like that. So they may vary the percentages or maybe it's just the manufacturing. But again, I can only find one one um, material data safety sheet for all any cubic resins. So I'm assuming that they all sort of have the same base. All right. The next piece I want to talk about is containers may explode when heated. <laughs> That's a good thing. Uh, also, if they do explode or if they are do catch fire, um, they do release a poisonous gas. So again, be aware of this. If you have these in your home, even if you have them in your shop and your shop catches fire, 
there is a great risk, especially, you know, obviously uh, folks like us who are really into it will have multiple bottles, maybe a couple gallons. Uh, again, this poses a risk to yourself as well as the first responders. So be prepared if something like this happens to warn the first responders that this type of material is in your house or in your shop or they may be exposed to it. Because again, we don't want harm to come to first responders or ourselves, obviously. So something to keep in mind. And also it's very clear here is ensure adequate ventilation and remove all sources of ignition. So again, it's kind of interesting. It says this is non-combustible, but it does have ignition ratings for it. So again, I would be very careful around open flames, sparks, um, anything like that with this product, just, just to be safe. The next thing is again, for storage, it, it, it keep indoors ventilation or local exhaust devices. Again, I can't stress this enough. This is not something you wanna put in your kid's bedroom, your living room. Uh, or like I said, even your basement. Uh, you want to have some sort of ventilation for this uh, to remove the fumes from your work area or your home. Do not put this in your just shop or your basement or something like that. Even one unit, again, this is not a good thing. Uh, you know, especially if you have a family member that has allergies, that have asthma, again, they can have a reaction to this. So, so again, be safe. Uh, and again, engineering controls, adequate ventilation, exhaust ventilation. This is required under exposure controls and personal protection. And one of the things I've, I've spoken to the state OSHA for my state, which is Michigan, in the past, and they indicated that these should be in a vent hood environment. Um, even the MSDS clearly um, states that. So again, be cognizant of this. This is not something you want in the air envelope of your home. And again, the typical safety requirements, glass, suiting, you know, face mask, boost, gloves, uh, you know, all the common stuff. Uh, you know, even talks about when using use with a, a respirator, full face respirator with multi-purpose combination. Uh, again, this is important. This stuff is not user friendly. Now, again, as I mentioned, flammability, this listed is non-combustible, but it also provides an, uh, an auto ignition temperature, which I found very interesting. So uh, again, and it says keep away from open flames. It says keep away from static electricity, sparks, which could ignite it. So again, I find a little bit interesting that they say non-flammable. So again, be very careful with this stuff. And is, again, up here you see uh, you know, protective equipment recommended, goggles, gloves, etc. That sort of goes all without saying. And again, as I've already mentioned, you know, one of the things that it says uh, to keep away from is high temperatures and static electricity. Now, one of the things, the interesting thing here is I had it in this cup and it is a thermal reactive plastic. So as it cures, it actually heats up and it actually melted the bottom of this plastic cup, which I was using as a container for this and, and uh, so again rather interesting so be again be careful if you have a large mass of this and you accelerate it you know into curing it's going to generate a lot of heat so again a little bit of a PSA safety note there uh, it is obviously has acute toxicity and they mentioned you know volumes for lab rats again we're not lab rats uh, but obviously you should not be drinking this ingesting it um, you know, obviously, if you inhale it, it can get in your bloodstream. Again, safety is a paramount concern using this material. One of the final pieces I want to talk about is actually disposal of the container itself as well as the product. So the product should not be disposed of in its liquid form, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Uh, you know, clearly here it, it is it has permanent damage to aquatic life. It should not be poured into sewers or into drainage ditches or things like that. So one of the things, what should you do with this? And in the the pieces, uh, a friend of mine, Dr. Dave, actually pointed out something that uh, he knows that they're doing in the medical industry with this is especially. Uh, the excess resin, which is being cleaned off parts, say in your IPA or your Simple Green, etc., uh, before they don't uh, actually directly dispose of the liquid itself. What they do is they put a, a piece of glass over the IPA cover um, or the IPA container. They put a, a UV light over top of that, leave that sit there for a period of time, and then strain off the solid materials and dispose of the solid materials. Is just that the solid 
instead of the liquid form, which I thought was really neat because then they can reuse the IPA and you know safely dispose of the solids. So I thought that was actually a good tip I wanted to pass on to you guys. So anyways, again, as, as I've covered out here, um, I'm not trying to be negative on SLA printers. I'm simply trying to share this. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not trying to dispense medical advice. I'm simply sharing with you what's in the uh, uh, you know, safety data sheets for the product and what type of risks you could be exposed to in using it and making some suggestions to potentially safer usage models. And again, utilizing this in a well-ventilated area or using some sort of a mechanical ventilation system. And I really recommend the, the latter, a mechanical ventilation system over that of just pure ventilation because what happens with the mechanical ventilation system, and I've covered this in prior videos, is you're taking the air and moving it away from you at a distance. You're not simply allowing it to be diffused into a greater area around you. So hopefully you found this interesting. I will be doing other resins. Uh, the next one will be a water-based resin. How does that perform? So we'll take a look at that. I'll do similar tests with the air quality meter. We'll take a look at this uh, safety data sheet. Uh, you know, what is it made of? What are the precautions they recommend? What's it smell like? I'll share that with you. So hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, share it with your friends that might have an SLA printer. Give it a thumbs up. Swag shop up there. Subscribe over there. And hey, let me know in the comments below if you think you have uh, a handle on some safe SLAs or preferred SLAs in that manner. I'll get them and let's do some testing and look at them. Cheers and see you in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.